Bonjour, good morning. Je suis Christopher Manfredi et je suis le doyen de la Faculté des Arts à l'Université McGill. Et je suis ravi, ravi de vous souhaiter la bienvenue à le dévoilement du long liste uh, du prix Scotiabank Giller. First of all, I'd like to ask everyone to do something very important, which is to turn off your cell phones. Uh, je vous demanderai de fermer vos téléphones cellulaires, s'il vous plaît. Uh, it's a great pleasure for the Faculty of Arts to be involved in this uh, announcement and for McGill University, of course. And uh, the importance to the university and to the campus of this is, I think, uh, evident in the presence of our principal, uh, Suzanne Fortier, who will say a few words to us. For, to us. And she's uh, here. Uh, Dr. Fortier is the 17th principal and vice chancellor of McGill University. She, after graduating from McGill twice with a Bachelor of Science degree and a PhD in chemistry, she enjoyed a distinguished career as a scientist and administrator at Queen's University before becoming the president of the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council. And without further ado, let me turn the microphone over to Principal Fortier. Merci, Chris. Et uh, merci à vous tous d'être ici et bienvenue à McGill. It's really a thrill to be here today to welcome you personally to a historic event in an historic building. When Jack Rabinovich said, and I quote here, coming to McGill this year and announcing our long list in the arts building is like coming home, McGill is the right place, he may have been thinking about some of Canada's most talented artists and authors who made McGill their home, including McGill professor Stephen Leacock, Hugh McLennan, François Ricard, Louis Duddick, as well as McGill Arts alumni such as Leonard Cohen, Irving Layton, and Marion Eagle, to name just a few. At McGill, we know that our strengths are in our people. The people who have been part of our history have built McGill, and the people who are here today to build the future of McGill. We are proud that you, Jack, also made McGill your home and as a true McGillian, have contributed to celebrating our country through honoring its great authors. Merci énormément. Thank you, Jack, for bringing this wonderful event to our campus and for giving us this honor. And as always, welcome home, Jack, and welcome to all of you. Merci énormément. Merci, Madame la Principale. Thank you very much. Uh, before we move to the main event of revealing the long list, I would like to take a moment or two to tell you about two other related activities in the Faculty of Arts. One of those is our Mordecai Richler Writer in Residence Program. The Writer in Residence Program is situated in both the Department of English and the Département de Langue et Littérature Française. Each year for one term, there is a resident writer in each department. Writers in residence teach one course, give public lectures and readings, advise undergraduate and graduate students, organize writing workshops, and generally participate in the creative and intellectual life of the departments and the faculty. Since the program was founded in 2011, we have welcomed a diverse group of authors. They include Kathleen Winter, who was on the Scotiabank Giller shortlist for Annabelle in 2010, and Louis Amlen, who was on the Scotiabank Giller longlist for October 1970 in 2013, Stephen Hayton and Elise Turcotte, and Mark Zafrin and Anash Irani. This year's writers in residence, both of whom will be here during the winter semester, are Anita Rao Badami and Suzanne Jacob. That we've been able to attract such accomplished writers from such diverse stylistic and linguistic traditions speaks to the esteem with which McGill's reputation is held by the literary community. The other initiative is the Kundal Prize in Historical Literature at McGill. It is, I think, fitting 
that two McGill alumni are responsible for establishing the two largest literary prizes in Canada. Jack Rabinovich, of course, with the Scotiabank Giller Prize, but also the late Peter Kundal, whose generous gift established the Kundal Prize in Historical Literature. It is the world's largest prize for literary nonfiction in history. $75,000 prize for the winner and two Recognition of Excellence awards of $10,000 each. The six book, our six book long list will be revealed later this month. Stay tuned for that announcement and keep your eyes open for the announcement of the finalists, the three finalists on October 15th. And of course, our winner will be announced November 20th at a gala dinner, gala dinner at the Shangri-La Hotel in uh, Toronto. It is now uh, my pleasure uh, to invite Jack Rabinovich, founder of the Scotiabank Giller Prize, to the podium to say a few words. Jack. It's uh, strange to be up here, because I'm accustomed to being down there. <laughs> I mean, it's been many years, uh, I hate to mention it, but I think it's about 60 years since I've been in this hall. And uh, I'm very, very pleased to be here this, uh, this morning to, uh, to highlight the, uh, the 12 shortlisted books and to make another announcement. It's also very fitting because about 21 years ago, this prize started here <laughs> in Montreal. I met my friend Mordecai Richler at a place called Grumpy's on Bishop Street, and over several, more than several McCallums, uh, we concocted a prize in, in the honor of my late wife, Doris Giller, some of whose friends are here this, uh, this, this morning. And uh, at that time, we decided to have a prize for the best authors, Canadian authors in fiction, and we also decided to tro throw a sort of Montreal party in Toronto, which was uh, quite a unique type of situation, and that's why uh, I think everybody was happy to be there. Anyway, this is the 21st year, and before we get around to announcing the, uh, the 12 shortlisted authors, I thought I'd just reminisce for a moment and tell you that when we started this prize, it was $25,000 and $5,000 for each of the shortlisted authors. Uh, today, I'm very pleased to announce that with the uh, support, cooperation, and help of the Scotia, uh, Scotia Bank, the prize is now doubled. It is now $100,000 for the winner and $10,000 for each of the shortlisted authors. It's doubled what it used to be, which was $70,000, $50,000 for each of the uh, uh, $50,000 for the winner and $5,000 for the shortlisted authors. So. Uh, we're very pleased that Canadian authors will benefit from this. In fact, this year, the jury has read 162 books in order to come down with 12 shortlisted authors, two of whom are Montrealers. I was just about to say fellow Montrealers because I, I sort of feel that way. And uh, uh, I really don't know what else to say except that it's a, it's a wonderful situation because when I was at McGill, 60 odd years ago, as I said, there was not a university in Canada that had anything about Canadian literature. We, there wasn't a single university that had a course on Canadian literature. In those days, I think the explosion after the war had to do with Norman Mailer, James Jones, and J.D. Salinger. Today, we celebrate Canadian literature, and so thank you very, very much. Je voudrais euh, maintenant inviter euh, Madame euh, Laurence Lévy, vice-présidente de Scotiabank, euh, de prendre la parole. Bonjour à vous tous. C'est un immense plaisir pour moi d'être ici. Uh, merci au Dean Christopher Manfredi. It's my pleasure to be here as we unveil the long list for Scotiabank Giller Prize, recognizing excellence in Canadian fiction. The Scotiabank Giller Prize is truly one of a kind, giving a much deserved spotlight on a wonderfully varied group of writers who come from across the country. At Scotiabank, we believe the art makes Canadians richer. 
The arts encourage us to see the world in a different light and develop new perspectives, providing us with inspiration to pursue our own passions. The prize has become an industry-leading award, and that is due to the incredible work of Jack Rabinovich and Elena Rabinovich, and it has been our honor to partner with them to promote the nominees and the importance of Canadian literature. Over the last nine years, through Scotiabank's partnership, the prize has been able to grow while continuing to award extraordinary Canadian authors for their literary contribution. As Jack just announced, we are thrilled to be increasing our support of these gifted writers by doubling the prize purse this year to 140,000, making it the richer fiction prize in Canada. I'm excited to see what book have made this year list, and I offer my early congratulations to the long-listed authors for the 2014 Scotiabank Giller Prize. Thank you. Merci, uh, Madame Lévy. Now we're getting closer to our main event, and it is now time to learn who is on the Scotiabank Giller Prize long list this year. As uh, you may have heard from Jack, this is only the second time the long list has been presented outside of Toronto at a university. And we wanted to make this a memorable occasion. And so in addition to asking Denise Chong to present the books, we will also have Sarah Hepner Waldston creating live graphic recordings. For those of you who do not know her, Denise Chong is trained as an economist and began her career in the federal government including a position as senior economic advisor in the office of Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau. But the pull of writing was too strong, and she soon left economics behind to write full time, perhaps leaving the dismal science for a more, uh, a more uplifting uh, career. Her family memoir, The Concubine's Children, was a Globe and Mail bestseller for 93 weeks, called Beautiful, Haunting, and Wise by the New York Times Book Review. Her memoir was recently reissued as a Penguin Canada modern classic. Her subsequent books, The Girl in the Picture, about the Vietnam War and its most famous casualty, and Aegon Mao, a story of love, hope, and defiance about a bus mechanic's life set against the backdrop of the student occupation of Tiananmen Square, were equally groundbreaking narratives of social history. Her latest work, Lives of the Family, explores the emotional experience of the immigrant in small town Canada an internationally published author, a two-time finalist for the Governor General's Literary Award, and named in 2013 as an Officer of the Order of Canada, Denise Chong holds four honorary do doctorates, including her most important one from McGill University. Sarah Hepner Waldston's passion for graphic facilitation comes from a lifetime of formal artistic training, highly focused listening, and training working with groups in numerous industries. She has worked with such diverse groups as Amnesty International, Cirque du Soleil, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Merck, Treasury Board of Canada, and the United Nations. Graphic recording addresses the 80% of the population who are visual learners. By using keywords, graphic icons, metaphors, and colors, Sarah captures the essence of group dialogue in a highly visual format. This enables participants to maximize the effectiveness of their meetings. Her dialogue maps serve to bring clarity to the discussion while also nurturing participation, retention, creativity, and communication <coughs> among participants. Sarah's ability to capture the essence of a conversation is what makes her work so unique in the field. And because her approach to graphic recording is always through the lens of a visual storyteller, she is a perfect match to capture the essence of the words Denise will read. I'm now going to ask Sarah and Denise to come on stage and break the suspense. And as Jack mentioned, they're going to talk about 12 books on the long list. And Denise will read a brief passage from each one. So Denise and Sarah. Excitement begins. Waiting for the Man by Arjun Basu, published by ECW Press.
It was as if I were floating. That was what I first noticed, the original thing. This floating business was a sign of something going on inside my head. I would find myself off the ground, hovering, and then moving slowly, effortlessly, seeing my own self encumbered by the normal laws of physics, everyone and everything still governed by the rules and regulations that make things run. I was part of it and was a part. My floating self felt new and improved, smarter, fresher, more alive, but it would never last. The Betrayers by David Bismosgus, published by HarperCollins Canada. <laughs> A thousand kilometers away, while the next great drama of his life was unfolding, and God was banging his gavel to shake the Judean hills, Baruch Kotler sat in the lobby of a Yalta hotel and watched his young mistress berate the hotel clerk, a pretty blonde girl who endured the assault with a stiff, mulish expression. A particularly Russian sort of expression, Kotler thought. The morose, disdainful expression with which the Russians had greeted their various invaders, an expression that denoted an irrational, mortal refusal to capitulate, the pride and bane of the Russian people. That Leora persisted in arguing with the girl proved that she was the product of another culture. <laughs> American Innovations by Rivka Galton, published by HarperCollins Canada. I was at home, not making spaghetti. I was trying to eat a little less often, it's true. A yogurt in the morning, a yogurt at lunchtime, ginger candies in between, and a normal dinner. I don't think of myself as someone with a weight issue, but I had somehow put on a number of pounds just four months into my unemployment. And when I realized that this had happened, I never weigh myself. My brother just said to me on a visit, I don't recognize your legs. I wasn't happy about it. Although, maybe I was happy about it. Because, at least, I had something I knew it wouldn't be a mistake to really dedicate myself to. Hell by Francis Attani, published by HarperCollins Canada. <laughs> November 1919. There was no escaping the wind. Gusts blew in off the bay, beat against shirts and trousers and linens pegged to the clothesline. Air pockets were trapped. Sheets snapped out furiously. From inside the closed veranda at the rear of the house, Ken and Oak could not shut out the sound. He closed the outdated newspapers he'd been reading and made an effort to align its edges. Once he'd folded it along the creases, he placed it on top of a neat and growing stack beside his chair. Watch How We Walk by Jennifer Lovegrove, published by ECW Press.
The first line was small, timid, and red. I was scared, but it was the only way through. I breathed deeply and drew the line longer, pushed harder, and it bloomed. It hurt. I clenched my teeth, then smiled. I etched another line perpendicular to the first. It burned clear and pure, both pain and, and pleasure, sheer release. Red beaded and dripped down my arm, but I didn't look away. Compared to everything else that had happened, it was nothing. Us Conductors by Shawn Michaels, published by Random House Canada. I was Leon Terraman before I was Dr. Theremin, and before I was Leon, I was Lev Sergeyevich. The instrument that is now known as a theremin could as easily have been called a Leon, a Leova, a Sergeyevich. It could have been called a Clara, after its greatest player. Pash, like Termenvox. He liked its connotations of science and authority. But this name always made me laugh. Termenvox, the voice of Termen, as if this device replicated my own voice as if the Terman's trembling soprano were the song of this scientist from Leningrad. <laughs> Moving forward sideways like a crab by Shani Mutu, published by Doubleday Canada. Surely it is a failure of our human design that it takes not an hour, not a day, but much, much longer to relay what flashes through the mind with the speed of a hummingbird's wing. There is so little time left now, and what Jonathan wants to know and I to say are not the same. I realize Jonathan is a grown man and can surely take whatever words I offer him. But what good would come of it if I were to tell him how, 10 years into my relationship with his mother, India, she informed me that I was a disappointment. The Girl Who Was Saturday Night by Heather O'Neill, published by HarperCollins Canada. I was heading along Rue Sainte Catherine to sign up for night school. There was a cat outside a strip joint going in a circle. I guessed it had learned that behavior from a stripper. I picked it up in my arms. What's new, pussycat? I said. All the buildings on that block were strip clubs. What on earth was their heating bill like in the winter? They were beautiful, skinny stone buildings with gargoyles above the windows. They were the same color as rain. There were lights blinking around the doors. You followed the light bulbs up the stairs. <laughs> Paradise and Elsewhere by Kathy Page, published by Biblioasis. The village looks closer to the road than it is, and I see them coming from a long way off. 
their clothes bright white against the mud and the scrub of the plain. Most often it is a man and a woman together like this. The man has a camera and both of them wear money belts around their waist. When they reach the path, I slip down from the wall. I watch them coming around the twist in the path. They see me and I smile. My October by Claire Holden Rothman, published by Penguin Canada. Luke stared at the page, or at least the section of the page visible on the screen, the screen he had spent the last 15 years of his life staring at. The background was blue, slightly darker than the shell of a robin's egg, or the blue of a sky at dusk, just as the light begins to fade. Luke had been thinking for some time now about a laptop. He'd mentioned it to Hannah last week before she'd left for Toronto. He'd informed her that he might go on a little shopping spree while she was away. She'd laughed, her eyebrows rising in amazement. Luke Levesque wasn't big on gadgets. It had taken him years to switch from his old Smith Corona to a computer, and he hadn't gone on the spree yet. And if he never did, it would come as no surprise to his wife. All My Puny Sorrows by Marion Taves, published by Knopf Canada. <laughs> Our house was taken away on the back of a truck one afternoon late in the summer of 1979. My parents and my older sister stood in the middle of the street and watched it disappear a low-slung bungalow made of wood and brick and plaster, slowly making its way down First Street, past the A&W and the deluxe bowling lanes and on, on out to Number 12 Highway, where we eventually lost sight of it. I can still see it, said my sister Alfreda repeatedly, until finally she couldn't. I can still see it. I can still see it. I, I can still... Okay, no, nope. it's gone she said. <laughs> and finally, The Ever After by Ashwin Rao by Padma Vishwanathan, published by Random House Canada. the 9th of June, 2004. At three in the morning, New Delhi's air is mostly remnants. This is its quietest hour. Though the city is not still, the sounds of night business concluding, morning business being prepared, all sorts of shrouded transactions, these carry. But the air itself is nostalgic with acrid exhaust, cook stove smoke, the dying breaths of jasmine and bougainvillea breaking down into each other, night exhaling the prior day. And Ladies and gentlemen, that is the Scotiabank Giller Prize 2014 long list.
Thank you very much, Denise and Sarah. And thank you, Jack, for allowing McGill University to participate in this great event and the great announcement uh, that you've made. Uh, Jack's coming up on stage. I don't know. That's not my notes, uh, not my plan. <laughs> but I'll let you, uh, let you no, do that. No, I, I just want to thank McGill and Dean Manfredi and Suzanne Forep, principal and vice chancellor, and Laurence uh, Levy of the Scotiabank. Uh, it's been tremendous to see this long list established this way in such a fine manner. It's an honor to the writers. It's an honor to Canadian literature. And I want to thank McGill very sincerely for a job extremely well done. Thank you very much, Jack. Now, before uh, releasing you completely, I want to say that I do look forward to wel welcoming all of you back here in this venue on Tuesday, September 23rd at 1.30 for Canada Remix, which will be an event in celebration of the 20th anniversary of the McGill Institute for the Study of Canada. So put that in your calendars. Uh, you now know where to locate the, the venue, and I look forward to seeing you there. And now, please join me in continuing to celebrate the 2014 Scotiabank Giller Prize Longlist at a reception in the lobby. Thank you very much. <laughs>